This is one of the most interesting reads I've come across. It's rather complex and takes a while to digest, but it's 100% worth it. It's an official declassified CIA document and a terrific analysis of consciousness and beyond, known as the Gateway Process. While it's an older document and has been declassified for a while now, the fact that modern developments in science, quantum physics, psychedelics, and neurobiology confirm what's written within those pages is nothing short of outstanding. It explains consciousness in a profound and analytical way and merges knowledge from mystics from Hindu, Buddhist, and Tibetan cultures to contemporary scientific knowledge of Planck distance, Einstein's theory of relativity, and the works of Niels Bohr. The cosmic spiral and torus is everything, and everything is one. It seems as though individual consciousness is pulled from the collective consciousness using the frequency vibrations of the being. This applies to humans, whales, fungus, and amoeba. Mystics of past and present, including all ancient religions, understood these concepts thousands of years ago. Still, it takes much to open the minds of the most pragmatic, self-conscious, and uptight people. Eleven, consciousness and energy. Before our explanation can proceed any further, it is essential to define the mechanism by which the human mind exercises the function known as consciousness, and to describe the way in which that consciousness operates to deduce meaning from the stimuli which it receives. To do this, we will first consider the fundamental character of the material world in which we have our physical existence, in order to accurately perceive the raw stuff with which our consciousness must work. The first point which needs to be made is that the two terms, matter and energy, tend to be misleading if taken to indicate two distinctly different states of existence in the physical world that we know it. Indeed, if the term matter is taken to mean solid substance as opposed to energy, which is understood to mean a force of some sort, then the use of the former is entirely misleading. Science now knows that both the electrons which spin in the energy field located around the nucleus of the atom and the nucleus itself are made up of nothing more than oscillating energy grids. Solid matter, in the strict construction of the term, simply does not exist. Rather, atomic structure is composed of oscillating energy grids surrounded by other oscillating energy grids, which orbit at extraordinarily high speeds. In his book, Stalking the Wild Pendulum, Itzhak Bentov gives the following figures. The energy grid, which composes the nucleus of the atom, vibrates at approximately 1022 hertz, which means 10 followed by 22 zeros. At 70 degrees Fahrenheit, an atom oscillates at the rate of 1015 hertz. An entire molecule composed of a number of atoms bound together in a single energy field vibrates in the range of 109 hertz a live human cell vibrates at approximately 103 hertz. The point to be made is that the entire human being, brain, consciousness, and all is like the universe which surrounds him, nothing more or less than an extraordinarily complex system of energy fields. The so-called states of matter are actually variances in the state of energy, and human consciousness is a function of the interaction of energy in two opposite states, motion, versus rest, in a manner described in the following paragraph. 12. Holograms Energy creates, stores, and retrieves meaning in the universe by projecting or expanding at certain frequencies in a three-dimensional mode that creates a living pattern called a hologram. The concept of the hologram can be most easily understood by using an example cited by Bentov, in which he asks the reader to visualize a bowl full of water into which three pebbles are dropped. As the ripples created by the simultaneous entry of the three pebbles radiate outward towards the rim of the bowl, Bentov further asks the reader to visualize that the surface of the water is suddenly flash frozen so that the ripple pattern is preserved instantly. The ice is removed, leaving the three pebbles still laying at the bottom of the bowl. Then the ice is exposed to a powerful, coherent source of light, such as a laser, the result will be a three-dimensional model or representation of the position of the three pebbles suspended in mid-air. 
Holograms are capable of encoding so much detail that, for example, it is possible to take a holographic projection of a glass of swamp water and view it under magnification to see small organisms not visible to the naked eye when the glass of water itself is examined. The whole concept of holography, despite its scientific implications, has only been known to physicists since the underlying mathematical principles were worked out by Dennis Gabor in 1947. He later won a Nobel Prize for his work. Laboratory demonstration of Gabor's work only occurred years later following the invention of the laser, as biologist Lyle Watson explains. The purest kind of light available to us is that produced by a laser, which sends out a beam in which all the waves are of one frequency, like those made by an ideal pebble in a perfect pond. When two laser beams touch, they produce an interference pattern of light and dark ripples that can be recorded on a photographic plate. And if one of the beams, instead of coming directly from the laser, is reflected first off an object such as a human face, the resulting pattern will be very complex indeed. But it can still be recorded. The record will be a hologram of the face. 13. The part encodes the whole. Of further importance is the fact that even if we dropped our frozen hologram of the ripple pattern on the floor and broke it into a number of pieces, each individual piece would recreate the entire holographic image all by itself. The smaller the piece, the fuzzier and more distorted would be the resulting holographic projection. But the fact remains that a whole projection would nonetheless be made. The key to creating any hologram is that the energy in motion must interact with energy in a state of rest, or non-motion. In the foregoing example, the pebbles represent energy in motion, while the water, before its agitation by the pebbles, represents the energy at a state of rest. To activate, or in effect, to perceive the meaning of a holograph, energy, in this case a coherent light source such as a laser beam, must be passed through the interference pattern generated by the interaction between the moving energy and the energy at rest. In the simple example given by Bentov, this requirement was fulfilled by holding the frozen interference pattern in front of the coherent light to project the three-dimensional holographic image, its meaning, into space. As Marilyn Ferguson, editor of the Brain Mind Bulletin, tells us, another feature of a hologram is its efficiency. Billions of bits of information can be stored in a tiny space. The pattern of the holographic photograph is stored everywhere on the plate. 14. The Consciousness Matrix The universe is composed of interacting energy fields, some at rest and some in motion. It is, in and of itself, one gigantic hologram of unbelievable complexity. According to the theories of Carl Pribram, a neuroscientist at Stanford University, and David Bohm, a physicist at the University of London, the human mind is also a hologram which attunes itself to the universal hologram by the medium of energy exchange, thereby deducing meaning and achieving the state which we call consciousness. With respect to states of expanded or altered consciousness, such as gateway uses, the process operates in the following way. As energy passes through various aspects of the universal hologram and is perceived by the electrostatic fields which comprise the human mind, the holographic images being conveyed are projected upon those electrostatic fields of the mind and are perceived or understood to the extent that the electrostatic field is operating at a frequency and amplitude that can harmonize with and therefore read the energy carrier wave pattern passing through it. Changes in the frequency and amplitude of the electrostatic field which comprises the human mind determine the configuration and hence the character of the holographic energy matrix, which the mind projects to intercept meaning directly from the holographic transmissions of the universe. Then, to make sense of what the holographic image is saying to it, the mind proceeds to compare the image just received with itself. Specifically, it does this by comparing the image received with that part of its own hologram, which constitutes memory. By registering differences in geometric form and in energy frequency, the consciousness perceives. As psychologist Keith Floyd puts it, contrary to what everyone knows is so, it may not be the brain that produces consciousness, but rather consciousness that creates the appearance of the brain. 15. Brain in Phase 
The consciousness process is most easily envisaged if we picture the holographic input with a three-dimensional grid system superimposed over it, such that all of the energy patterns contained within can be described in terms of three-dimensional geometry using mathematics to reduce the data to the two-dimensional form. Bentov states that scientists suspect that the human mind operates on a simple binary go-no-go no go system, as do all digital computers. Therefore, once it superimposes a three-dimensional matrix over holographic information it wishes to interpret, and reduces that information mathematically to two-dimensional form, it can completely process it using its fundamental binary system, just as any computer made by the hand of man can process volumes of data and make various comparisons between the data and information stored in its digital memory. Our minds operate in the same way, perceiving by comparison only. Bentov states the proposition this way, Our whole reality is constructed by constantly making such comparisons. Whenever we perceive something, we always perceive differences only. In states of expanded consciousness, the right hemisphere of the human brain, in its holistic, non-linear, and non-verbal mode of functioning, acts as the primary matrix or receptor for this holographic input, while, by operating in phase or coherence with the right brain, the left hemisphere provides the secondary matrix through its binary, computer-like method of functioning to screen further the data by comparison and reduce it to a discrete, two-dimensional form. 16. Evaluation To the extent that Gateway succeeds in bringing about a refinement in the energy matrix of the mind, it succeeds in expanding or altering human consciousness so that it can perceive without recourse to the intercession of the physical senses, such that ever more of the universal hologram, not, of course, accessible by sense perception, can ultimately be perceived and understood. Marilyn Ferguson has written that the theories of Pribram and Bohm appear to account for all transcendental experience, paranormal events, and even normal perceptual oddities. She goes on to say of Pribram, Currently, he is proposing a startling, all-encompassing model that is generating considerable excitement among those intrigued by the mysteries of human consciousness. His holographic model marries brain research to theoretical physics, it accounts for normal perception and simultaneously takes the paranormal and transcendental experiences out of the supernatural by explaining them as a part of nature. Like certain strange discoveries of quantum physics, the radical reorientation of this theory suddenly makes sense of paradoxical sayings of mystics throughout the ages. 17. Self-Cognition to complete our outline of the process by which the mind achieves and exercises consciousness, we must also describe the mechanism which accounts for the aspect of human thought that differentiates it from the consciousness of plants or animals, i.e. self-cognition. Humans not only know, but they know what they know. They are able to monitor the process of their own thinking and maintain an awareness of it. Moreover, they can conduct a comparative assessment, evaluating the functioning of their thought processes against various objective standards they have adopted. Human consciousness can do this because it has the capacity to duplicate aspects of its own hologram, project them out, perceive that projection, put it through comparison with the memory aspect, where its evaluation standards of measure are stored, of its own hologram, and measure or sense the difference using three-dimensional geometry and then binary go-no-go no go pulse to yield verbal cognition about the self.